If we were simply trying to get a quick answer, what we've done up to this point would be a great way to go about doing that. We've quickly narrowed down the fields that we are interested in without deleting the originals. But if we were going to need to perform uh, longer manipulations, we need to reuse this spreadsheet over and over, this would not be the best way to go about doing that. I would recommend you keep one sheet with the original data untouched. A sheet down here, we just have the one. I can add a new sheet that defaults to sheet two, sheet three, whatnot. We can rename that. If we keep one sheet with my original data, that allows us always to go back and see what the original data set is. Right now, I can do that, but I'd have to come in unhide, unhide, unhide. Uh, unfilter, 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 and that's just time consuming. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Get back to our original status quo. Actually, better yet, let's close out of this spreadsheet and re-download it from Blackboard. Open it back up. Remember, this is what our original looked like. So let's keep this, let's rename this voting data as original data and let's add a new sheet. This sheet we're going to rename to dashboard. You can rename them by double clicking or by right clicking the name and choosing rename. We're going to create a dashboard that allows us to look at a succinct view of the data without actually manipulating the original data set. So even though we were using non-destructive techniques, we were hiding, we were sorting, we were filtering, we were still manipulating the view of that original data set. And that's not the uh, best way to go about that. So what do I want? We're going to create something that looks like where we were at. We had the locality. We had the office name. We had the ballot name. And we had the total votes. And what I want is a row for each county. And within that, a row for each office and a row for each ballot. And then how many votes. So instead of looking at a couple hundred rows, we simply want to know how many votes for, let's pick the most important, we're going to stick with governor. How many did each county vote for each candidate? One of the first things we would need to do is get our list of county names. And we could certainly come in here and copy and paste from one sheet to the other. If we had them memorized, we could um, just simply type them out. But I recommend doing uh, something called remove duplicates. We're going to go ahead and select its cell E2, the first row that has one of the county names in it. Scroll down to the bottom, hold your shift key, and select cell E302. That selects everything in between. That's what a shift click does. If you select anywhere, hold shift, and then select somewhere else, you notice it selects everything in between. So again, I'm going to select cell E2, scroll down to the bottom, so hold my shift key, select cell E302. I'm going to copy that entire bit of data, switch over to my dashboard sheet, paste that into cell A2. And this is not quite what I want yet, but that's where the remove duplicates functionality comes in. With my range still selected, we can come up to the data tab on the ribbon and look for the remove duplicates option. The first question asks me, do you want to expand or continue with the current selection? This means you've got something selected. Do you want to stick with that or do you want to work on the entire sheet? In this instance, I do not want to expand the selection. I want to continue with what I've currently got selected. Hitting remove duplicates will then ask you, uh, what information are we looking at? Does my data have headers? 
Then I click cancel and scroll up to the top here. Our data does have headers, but notice that I have not selected cell A1, meaning I have not selected the header. That's very important. If I go back to remove duplicates, continue with my current selection. If I choose my data has headers, it instantly thinks that, oh, this first one was a header. That's not true because we had not selected it. We had not selected my header. So in actuality, even though this sheet does have headers in it, my selection does not. And that's what this checkbox is referring to. So we will leave that unchecked. We will click OK. And it has removed all of the duplicate entries it has found. After we've removed the duplicates from our locality name, we can perform that manipulation on our other columns as well. Since we're only concerned with one office at this instance, uh, we don't have to worry about that. But for example, I'll go ahead and do this again. We select cell K2, we scroll down, hold our shift key, select cell K302, copy that range, select cell B2, paste that in there, leaving it still selected, go up to my ribbon, data tab, remove duplicates, I do not want to expand the selection. I want to continue with the current selection. Because I do not have cell B1 selected, I will not check my data has headers. 12 unique values remain OK. This is all of the possible offices that were found in this spreadsheet. This is not exactly this does not mean that all of these offices were up for election for each county, however. If we went through and examined our original data, we would find, well, some counties had treasurers, some counties had school board members. And for that reason, we're not going to concern ourselves with many of these offices. We're only going to concern ourselves with the governor's office for this example. If you are being tasked with this at work, however, you, you may be asked to consider all the options, in which case you would always need to use your critical thinking skills, go back and double, triple check your formulas, your data, make sure that you don't uh, end up with a bad dashboard, so to speak, because you copied and pasted some things in and they weren't really there. The bottom right hand corner of every cell, if you hover over that, you'll notice the cursor changes. Clicking that allows us to quick fill. Because we only had one cell selected and it was a piece of text, quick fill just kind of hit copy paste. Quick fill, if this was the number one and the number two, however, if I selected the both of them, and quick fill, you notice that it keeps on going down. So there are a few sets of very useful sequences that Excel has in it that it will quick fill for you. But that bottom right hand corner, quick fill is very, very handy. The ballot name. We could do the same thing here, but we wouldn't want to necessarily just select cells L2 through L302 because again many of these ballot names are not running for governor. We really only have three options that we're concerned with. Well four actually. We need to find our, our independent candidate which I haven't noticed yet. This is where we can go back to quickly filtering our data. Come back to home, select row one and filter Let's just look at the governor's office for a second. Now that we've filtered by governor, we can go ahead and 
select these rows, copy them, paste them in, and use our remove duplicates option. Continue. Okay. Now we know that these are our actual options for who ran as governor in each of these counties. Some of the counties might not have had write-ins. Some of the counties might not have had the independent candidate. But these are the possible options from that spreadsheet. To continue setting this up, we could either A, move everything down, for example, we could have king and queen county, governor, each option. We could copy and paste this. Uh, that's going to be a really long spreadsheet. It's not going to be the best looking. So let's kind of rearrange our data a little bit. I'll move this back up. Maybe instead of just having ballot, because there are only four choices, we could move them from being rows and transpose them into being new column heads. And again, we could cut, paste, cut, paste, cut, paste four times. That wouldn't be too bad. But again, if you had to do this 10 times or 100 times, you wouldn't want to do that. Excel has a very handy transpose function that will transpose things that are currently in rows, transpose them into columns and vice versa from columns into rows. So select our four options and we're going to choose to copy this in our ribbon go back to the home tab where do we want to paste this we're going to start with cell c1 and instead of just clicking paste you'll notice that underneath that the word paste has a little drop down arrow and there are many different paste options under the first grouping here the very last one is called transpose and you can see it's kind of as I hover over it, it, does, it kind of shows it to me here through cell C1 through F1. And it does exactly what I want it to do. It's going to transpose these from being rows into columns. Now that I have them where I want, I will go ahead and delete my, those originals. I can double click in between each of the columns to auto size them. Now each of these columns that I have currently highlighted will be the number of votes for that candidate for governor in that particular county and that's what we're going to work on in the next section.